We took the average campaign in a client account from 1% reply rate overall to over 10% and even 22% in one campaign. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how we did that with a few simple changes. So you can see here in the account, some of the campaigns were getting 2% reply rates, other were getting 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 2. It's like overall very bad. And as you can see, there's very few amounts of positive replies that are coming through. And most of the replies that are actually coming through are just no thank you. And so after we applied a few changes, the ones that I'm going to show in the video today, we started getting reply rates of 13%, 7%, 8%, and then it went up again to 24%, 11% on this one, 26, 22, 26, 39% in this one, 22, and so forth. So you can see that the results started to get a lot better. Now, one thing I do want to address right off the get-go is the amount of leads inside of these campaigns. Uh, when I show this to people before, they're like, well, but you just targeted a lot less people in these campaigns and overall probably sent more relevant messaging. But no, that's not actually the case. We just segmented very small changes in each of these campaigns, but you can sum up the amount of leads in them and that's still going to be relevant to this test. Now, let's get straight into how we fixed this and how we got these results to be like the ones that I showed on the screen. And so the first thing that we did was remove all sorts of spam traps, toxic emails, and irrelevant leads from the lead list. What we noticed at first was that we were barely getting any replies. And the ones that we did get were either out of office or no thank you. Now, what this usually indicates is that although the message isn't repulsive, else we would get a lot more negative replies and not as many no thank yous, um, we just weren't getting enough replies, but it overall just indicates that the messaging just wasn't resonating, which means that we need to assess first what the list looks like and if it has a market fit. That is the keyword here. Now, why is that? It's because if you look at the average list that you get from tools like Apollo, and by the way, I'm not picking on Apollo specifically. This could be Zoom Info. This could be Crunchbase. Uh, you will usually find that a lot of them are full of companies that no longer exist or that are no longer relevant to you. So, for example, you search for real estate companies and you find real estate marketing agencies, for example, and even some of them are actually spam traps. These are fake companies that were plugged into those databases for you to contact them and for these spam companies to find you as a spammer. Now, why is that in the first place? It's because these databases, they compete on price and they compete on coverage. And so what happens is they're not incentivized as much to keep on refreshing the data, meaning scraping it again to make sure it's still relevant. And at the same time, they are indeed incentivized to have a lot of data in their database. So they're more likely to keep companies even though they no longer exist or they are not good companies to keep in the first place. And so then we ran all of this list through an automation in NADN, which by the way, I covered this automation more extensively in another video. But what it pretty much does is very simple. It opens every single company website and it checks if the website loads, if the website is not fake, and then it gets a markdown of the content and checks if that markdown, meaning what they have written on the website, matches the ideal ICP that we want in our campaigns. For example, real estate companies and not real estate marketing agencies. And so that is how we check companies. In terms of checking people, we had another automation using lead magic that is also explained in this other video. But what this automation would do is open the LinkedIn profile, check if the account is real, if it has even a profile picture, if it has experience written down, if it has enough connections and connections that are relevant, et cetera, to make sure the account is actually real. Then it checked if the person is still within the company and if they are the right position title. And so what this automation would do is take everyone that wasn't within this criteria and remove them from the list. And so we were left with a crystal clean list that was very good to use in our campaigns and we knew and so we knew that everyone in that list would find our offer somewhat relevant now there is a plus here we also migrated from using million verifier which is a tool that does email validation to using use bouncer that not only does email validation and does it a bit better from what we tested but it also checks for toxic emails they have access to a platform called black box owned by email industries that checks for toxic emails. Emails are very likely to report as a spammer. And so there is a list that they've compiled of people that over the years have been reporting a lot of people as spammers and use Bouncer is able to cross check that. So it makes the list a whole lot better. Now you can check out the other video if you wanna see more about this automation. But now that we got our list right, we got into the infrastructure for this client. And so I wanted to clarify that what you're really finding with cold email is actually spam reports from users. You're not necessarily fighting Google and Microsoft. They want you to have emails that perform, but what they don't want is for you to stray users away from their platform because they built this platform to have users just so that businesses would pay them. So if you're going against them, 
by sending messages that are irrelevant to people, you're literally straying users away, you're getting more spam report complaints, and that will destroy your reputation. So what we are doing as effective cold emailers is we're setting up a lot of email accounts fully disconnected from one another. And what that means is that they don't tie to each other, right? They're not in the same admin panel. They were not bought by the same company. There's a few tricks that we implement there to have accounts that are disconnected from each other. But it goes beyond that. And so what we notice is that if you can get a lot of them and you still get a lot of spam complaints, it still destroys the account. So look at it this way. Let's say that you're sending 10 emails per day. So that would be this amount right here. So let's say that you get a spam complaint on the second email that you sent out. You get it on the fourth email that's sent out. And you keep on getting every few emails, you get a few spam complaints. The problem is that there is a limit to how many you can get before you get flagged. And that limit from what we tested tends to be around less than three spam complaints per day. And so if you're sending 10 emails a day, you're more likely to get more spam complaints. So what we figured we would do for this client, because they were in an industry that did get a lot of spam complaints, is we would send less emails per email account and so reduce the amount of spam complaints we get per day and we don't get accounts flagged anymore. So even in this scenario, we would only get two spam complaint rates a day from sending five emails instead of three from sending 10. And so therefore, our accounts would last longer and our deliverability got a lot better. Another thing that we had to do as a consequence of that is get more inboxes. So that's what we did. We got more inboxes and we completely solved now the volume issue. And we don't churn and burn email accounts like we used to do before, which is extremely helpful. Now, if you want to see what our infrastructure looks like, I strongly recommend that you open the first video in the description in another tab so you can watch it after this one. Or if you want, feel free to book a call with me in the link down below as well. And I can show you all of this and give you personalized recommendations. But there will break down exactly which accounts we got, what kind of inboxes, how we set them up and all of those things. So feel free to check that out. Now, from here, what we had to do to these accounts to make sure that we didn't burn them is use a warm-up management technique to trick our so-called credit score. And so... The thing is, inboxes don't last long unless they maintain a great reputation. We all know that, right? And so what happens is email service providers like Google and Microsoft start cracking down on inboxes that don't get enough engagement. And let me even highlight this, don't get enough engagement. And that is like Elon did on Twitter when he first acquired it. He just started firing everyone. And so Google and Microsoft are more likely to fire you off the platform if they're noticing that your reputation is not high. Again, they don't care about what you send. They care more about how people react to what you send. And so you can use warm-up and a few tricks, specifically one called the Seesaw Warm-Up Technique, in order to manipulate how Google and Microsoft see your reputation. So here is how that works. Let me actually exemplify it for you. Let's say that you get an email account. And the first day you send 50 emails, right? In the campaign, you didn't ever do warm up. What happens is that you're going to get what? 10% reply rate. Does that look like a healthy account to you? If you create an email account and you contacted 10 people and only one reply, does that look healthy? No, it doesn't. It does not. And so what looks more healthy is an account that would get around 30% reply rate, right? But you can only truly achieve that if you're contacting people you know or if you're using warm-up to do that for you. So a very known technique in the cold email space is that you're going to ramp up volume slowly. So you start sending, let's say, three emails a day, then you send six emails, then you get send nine emails, and you go up until the number that you want to send later on. And then you can control the reply rate. So you're using a tool like Small Lead in this case to send emails back and forth with other email accounts in their tool and fake engagement. So now you're faking the 30% engagement rate that you needed, right? And so your account looks very, very healthy. And by the way, this right here is your reply rate, okay? Now, your accounts look very healthy. But what happens is that a lot of companies stop here and then they stop warm up and then they start sending emails in the campaign and then they only get their 10% reply rate. So what happened in Google's eyes or Microsoft eyes is that your account went from having a great reputation to having a terrible reputation. And so if you look at this, this is the drop that they're monitoring to figure out if you're a good or a bad sender. And so what you want to do instead is manage your warm-up settings so that it always looks like you're getting a lot of replies. And so you do that by dividing your sending in half. You're going to send half amount of emails in the campaign and the other half, let me do it like this, you're going to send in the warm-up. So what's going to happen is you're going to get, let's say, your 10% reply rate from the campaign and you're going to trick the system. You're going to fake your credit score with the warm up. Because in the warm up, you can ask Smallly to send more replies to your account. And now it's as if you got this machine that can fake your credit score. It can purchase things and pay them on time to get you a higher credit score. And what's the most beautiful part about it is that you don't need to turn it off. And in fact, 
You can keep on growing your credit score if you keep it on. And so this is the seesaw warm-up technique. How does this relate to a seesaw? Very quickly, put it simply, this is like those things that kids play in the playground. In one side, you're going to have your warm-up settings. In the other one, you're going to have the campaign settings. And so when you are sending campaigns, what you want to be doing is you want to keep this balance like this. When you're not sending campaigns, let's say the campaign ended or it's the weekend, what you're going to do is you're going to put the warm-up to be sending more and the campaign to be sending less. Okay, But not only that, you need to remember that what matters most is the reply rates that you get. So if, the, if you're only sending warm-up, your reply rate is going to be around 30%. If you're sending warm-up and campaign, the reply rate in the warm-up has to be way higher. So let's say 60%. Remember, because you need to get more replies now out of the warm-up to balance how many replies you get out per day. Well, that is a seesaw warm technique that we implemented for this client and it made things work. If you want to know exactly the settings that I've used, feel free to comment down below or send me a DM in any of the platforms, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, which, whichever you want, and I'll send you all live settings for the warm management. But that was the next thing that we have implemented. Now, point being, make sure that you always have a great reply rate on your email accounts. You do not want to keep things on the default settings, which is turning off the warm up or keeping the reply rate of the warm up very low. Remember that you need to fake more replies in order to get better reputation. Okay. And so the next thing is now that we got a great infrastructure, the next possible thing that could actually prevent us from getting a high reply rate was the copy. So we need to make sure that the copy wasn't the bottleneck. And so the first thing that we did was reduce the spamminess of the copy. And for example, words like now, free, and co, they are often used by spammers, often people that are trying to sell something to code audiences. And so that is why using these words in your code emails can actually mess up with your overall deliverability. But that is nothing new. That we already knew if you've been in code email for a minute, you already know that that's a thing. So what is new is that now ESPs, email service providers, also check semantics, the way things are written, and the meaning of the emails for spamminess. And so what we had to do from here is run the whole message through AI. So we use ChatGPT 4.0 for this until it said that the email is more friendly and casual than salesy. And that in itself solved a lot of the deliverability problems we were having, especially with Microsoft 365 users that we were contacting, which leads us to the next thing, which is what is the next thing that spam filters check? Are you sending emails in bulk? Okay. This is the keyword here, bulk emails. If you are, they are more incentivized to stop you from doing that because when you send emails in bulk, it's likely that you're not making it as relevant as it could be to the person reading it. And it's more likely that you get them to either report you or something else that can happen. So here's the next thing. Although we have a lot of email accounts sending low volume, that is what we established in the beginning. Kodima service providers can still see that it's us behind all of these emails just because they send emails that look the exact same. And so we cannot be sending emails that look the exact same and personalization is not always the answer. Why? Mainly because if you want to personalize a lot of your emails, you spend a lot of time doing that or you have to build all sorts of fancy systems. So what we chose to do for this client is add a lot more of what is called spin syntax to our copy. Here's what spin syntax is in case you're new to this. Let me actually bring text in. It's a system in Smallly that you can add in your copy to make every single email you send out look unique. So for example, I would write an email that looks like this. Hey, hi, and hello. And every time I do this in small lead, in this format, it will choose one of the three words in every single email it sends out. But when I do this enough times in a script, I get every single email I send out to look unique. And that is what solves this emails that look like they were sent in bulk. But then from here, the trick is that if I want to do that, it will take me a lot of time. And also, if you only change words like this, what I showed you right here, spam filters can still detect that you're doing this type of strategy. Saying hey, hi, and hello doesn't really change the semantics of the email. So how do you fix that? You're going to spin syntax whole sentences, okay? And you need them to sound different, but still make sense when you put them all together. And so you're going to have every single one of them be different. For example, hey, hi, hello, first name. Are you the right person for me to contact that company name? Then do a change, do a spin. Would you be the right person and company name for me to talk to? Then you're going to change again. 
is it okay if I send you some details about X, Y, and Z, right? And so what you're doing there is you're creating variations that sound different, but they still make sense when you put them together in the script. And that's where we want to use AI to do this for us because it's very monotonous if we want to do it ourselves. So here is the exact AI prompt that we use to craft it for us. Feel free to pause the video, feel free to copy this. But this is exactly what we use to generate these variations that actually trick spam filters. And so now what we get is a system that sends absolutely unique emails every time and that are actually undetectable to spam filters. And so we put all of this together and voila, we are here at 10% plus reply rate, even 26%, 32% like you saw in the beginning of the video. But how about where we got the email accounts, what we did to make the copy good and all of those things? Well, I actually recommend that you check out the video on the screen to see more about how we put the infrastructure together to send 21,000 emails per day. And I'll also break down exactly the infrastructure. So I'm gonna see you there.